Welcome back, everybody. Hope everyone is doing well. My name is Jason. I'll be your host on this CFL talk show, Hot Seas Huddle. In this video, we predict week 14 of the 2022 CFL season. But really quickly, before we get started, if you want to support the channel, as always, be sure to drop a like down below. Really appreciate it. And with that said, let's get started with today's video. So right off the bat, guys, I just wanted to apologize for the channel's content being so lean this week. Uh, just a really busy week, school starting, a bunch of other stuff going on. So I apologize for that, guys, and it will pick up going forward. But with that in mind, let's get started with the first game. BC at Montreal, the BC Lions favored. I don't have the numbers in front of me, unfortunately, guys. Uh, but the BC Lions I saw were favored in this game by a couple of points. And I think this game is very interesting because obviously you have the Antonio Pipkin, Vernon Adams angle. They're coming back to Montreal, uh, the former tandem at quarterback for the Alouettes. And then the Alouettes are coming off a very disappointing effort against the Ottawa Red Blacks last week. And they're at home, BC flying cross country. I think the Alouettes are going to find a way to win this game. I'm not sure how they're going to, but at the end of the day, I think that defensive line is going to find a way to make a little bit more of an impact than they did last week, where they were kind of invisible against Ottawa. I think some of the best games the Alouettes have played this year have been against the West Division. You think about that week one game against Calgary, even though they lost the game, they were very, very close to winning that game. They uh, whipped Saskatchewan on a short week, and hopefully, uh, for their case, they can find a way to do the same here against BC. I think Vernon Adams gets into this game later on uh, after Pipkin inevitably struggles. I just don't think Pipkin is a, is a starting caliber quarterback in this league, and uh, the Alouettes found that out themselves the past couple of years here. So uh, at the end of the day, I think the Alouettes will find a way to win this game. Just a gut feel. Uh, give me a final score of 24 to 21 in favor of the Alouettes in this one. Now moving on to Saturday's triple header in the CFL. Very exciting. The first one of the year, I believe. Starting with the first game, Ottawa hosting Toronto. Ottawa won the first game of this matchup a few weeks back, but we'll see what happens in this one, especially with Ottawa having not won a home game this year. I think that could be a crucial factor in this one. The next two games Ottawa has are against Toronto. So if Ottawa can win these games, theoretically, they are right back into the conversation for not just the playoffs, but somehow first place. So uh, very interesting uh, games we're going to see here between the Red Blacks and Argonauts. At the end of the day, though, I am going to take Toronto to win this game. I think Toronto's just a much better team right now, and I'm not completely sold on Ottawa. I think uh, they've gotten a couple of really light opponents the last couple of weeks. They played probably their best game of the year last week against uh, Montreal. Uh, but at the end of the day, I don't know how much the how high the ceiling is for this group with Nick Arbuckle at quarterback, even though Arbuckle has clearly provided a spark for them. Uh, I think they could win this game, but at the end of the day, I just trust Toronto more. I think Toronto has... Uh, the best team in the East on both sides of the ball, uh, defense and offense. So at the end of the day, I like Toronto's chances of uh, coming away with a victory here and avenging that loss a few weeks ago back at BMO Field. Now moving on to the second game of Saturday's triple header, which is the Banjo Bowl between the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And in this game, I'm looking to see if Saskatchewan is demoralized by that loss that they had last week, where they really should have found a way to win. Uh, they played very, very well, I felt, in that game, and they just could not find a way to uh, make the plays necessary at the end of the game, and Winnipeg was able to sneak away with the victory yet again. And this time they're playing in Winnipeg. I think it's going to be much tougher for them. I think at the end of the day, Cody Fajardo probably doesn't play as well as he did last week against this Winnipeg defense. And I think Winnipeg finds a way to uh, get to him a little bit more with pressure. That crowd noise playing a little bit of a factor. I think Zach Kolaris is playing uh, very much at a high level still at this point of the season. And I think that uh, that will be enough for Winnipeg to come away with the victory here and sweep this two-game series and take the Banjo Bowl here against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Now finally moving on to the final game of the week between the Edmonton Elks and the Calgary Stampeders from the Brick Field at Commonwealth. And this game, yet another opportunity for the Edmonton Elks to break that dreaded home losing streak but I don't think it's going to happen here. I think Calgary just has their number this year. Uh, even though two of the three games, I believe, have been one-score games between these teams this season, Calgary has walked away victorious in all three games. And I think 
it's not going to change here. I think Calgary played pretty dreadful in the first half last week and was still able to make the adjustments to uh, really pour it on in the second half and find a way to come away with a victory. Uh, Edmonton had a late fourth quarter touchdown to make it look a little bit closer than it actually was. Uh, so I do like Calgary to win this game. You have the added uh, you know, voodoo of playing at home for Edmonton. I just think that at the end of the day, Calgary finds a way to win this game. It may not be by a lot. It may just be by one score again, but I like them to win this game uh, with Jake Mayer at the helm. But with that said, those are just my picks for week 14 in the CFL. Sorry again about the length of this video. I usually go a little bit more in depth with each game, but at the end of the day, I just don't have the time this week. Going to be getting back to more of a normal schedule next week. So look forward to that, guys. But with that said, I hope everyone enjoys the games this weekend. Has a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.